Congress President Sonia Gandhi and Vice President Rahul Gandhi will appear before a Delhi court in the National Herald case today. Court had summoned the Gandhis and three others on the Pramai Fasai case of criminal conspiracy, cheating, criminal breach of trust, and misappropriation of property. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has handed over the reinstatement certificate of great freedom fighter Shamji Krishna Verma to Gujarat Chief Minister Anandi Ben Patel. This certificate was presented to Prime Minister Narendra Modi during his UK visit last month. With this certificate, Verma, who was disbarred from one of Britain's leading law society for advocating independence for India over a century ago, has been posthumously reinstated to the bar. Delhi High Court has refused to stay the release of the juvenile convict in the 16 December Delhi gang rape case. This means that the convict, who is now 20 years old, will walk free on Sunday unless there is an appeal against the decision. Delhi Commission for Women has written to President Pranam Mukherjee to intervene to stop the release of juvenile. Rajya Sabha is expected to function smoothly from Monday. All party meeting to end the log jam has borne fruits. A near consensus has emerged on passage of key legislations during the remaining three days of the session, but no consensus yet on GST bill. The House saw several disruptions before being adjourned for the day due to lack of decorum. India's GDP growth will touch uh, about uh, 7 to 7.5 percent uh, figures during the current financial year. In this report, Finance Ministry said that rural wages and MSPs are seeing moderation and rupees stable. Chief Economic Advisor Arvind Subramanian has said that the Indian economy is well cushioned to absorb any volatility. The ongoing Nairobi meet of the WTO is likely to be extended. India is expected to lodge a protest on talks being focused only on issue of uh, developed countries such as elimination of farm subsidies but not on the matters that developing world wants to prioritize including on measures to protect poor farmers and food sovereignty commerce minister nirmala sitaraman has said that there is no agreement yet on agriculture issues including on export competition permanent solution to the issue of uh, public stock holding for food security purposes and the special safeguard mechanism. Former Defence Secretary R. K. Mathur has been appointed as the Chief Information Commissioner, breaking away from the convention of appointing the head from the serving information commissioners. The post had fallen vacant after Vijay Sharma completed his tenure on 1st of December. The Uttar Pradesh government has approved a complete ban on the distribution, manufacture and sale of polythene carrying bags in the state. The Allahabad High Court had last month directed the Uttar Pradesh government to issue a notification enforcing a complete ban on the sale of polythene across the state by December the 31st. Madras High Court has rejected a plea seeking cancellation of half-yearly examination for school students in the flood-hit Tamil Nadu. The bench also refused to entertain a petition seeking postponement of CBSC examinations for class 10th and 12th students. CBI has taken Noida's assistant project engineer Ramendra into custody in connection with alleged corruption cases involving Noida chief engineer Yadav Singh, its first arrest in the high-profile corruption case. Ramendra is in four-day CBI custody where he is being questioned by the team. Turkey's security forces have killed 62 Kurdish militants in three days of operations in two mainly Kurdish towns near the border with Iraq. One Turkish soldier was also killed. The government has imposed 24-hour curfews in the towns of Sirz and Sulop allowing troops to battle militants linked with Kurdistan's worker party. UN Security Council has approved a resolution outlining a peace process for Syria involving talks by representatives of the Damascus government and the opposition but the draft says nothing on the crucial issue of what role President Bashar al-Assad will play. The resolution acknowledges that, that the peace process will not end the conflict because it bars terrorist groups operating in the country from participating in a ceasefire. US President Barack Obama has signed $1.1 trillion spending package to fund the government through next September, averting the risk of a government shutdown for a while. The spending package, which among other things introduced a hefty $4,000 on H-1B visas 
for Indian IT companies and impose stringent conditions on America's aid to Pakistan. The U.S. Congress has passed a legislation approving long-pending quota reforms of IMF that will give more voting rights to emerging economies like India and China in the functioning of the organization. The IMF quota and governance reforms would marginally reduce the voting share of traditional economic powerhouses like the U.S.